Hey guys, that's it here. Now with Reaper of Souls came the Mystic, a jovial, plump lady that we love to hate and hate to love. She gives us the unique opportunity to re-roll a property of an item with, of course, an ever-increasing price and no guarantee of the results. At this point, most, if not all of us, have come across an item that's just one property away from being a desirable addition to our gear. Thus, we face a very important question. Should we enchant the item with the mystic and hope for the correct property, or move on in hopes of a better drop? This question is even more important when we take into consideration the significant slowdown of making gold in Reaper Souls compared to the original game. There has been a recent post on the Diablo subreddit by the user Cobbletate which dabbled into the math behind the enchanting process. It's one of the better threads I've read this week, but it was a rather math-heavy post and thus I feel it didn't get the attention that it deserved. I will link it in the description of the video and I'll try to go over the things that he did along with my experiences with the reroll system, but I'll try to stick to simpler conclusions rather than the exact formulae. If you're not scared of numbers and probability calculations, I highly recommend reading into Cobble Tate's post. We'll start off with three assumptions. Please note that I'm saying assumptions because Blizzard have neither denied nor confirmed if this is how the enchanting process actually works. Assumption number one is, when you reroll, the game picks the affix first and then chooses the quality of the chosen affix. There is another possibility for this system, that it picks both the affix and the value from a single large pool of all possible affixes and qualities, but this is unlikely since we would be seeing affixes with large variations like health glow bonuses or life after kill thousands of times before a small variation affix like crit chance and attack speed, which is not the case. Assumption number two. It's equally likely to get each of the possible affixes. Now this is a debatable point. People have conflicting reports and it's not illogical that there is a weighted system that makes certain affixes more likely to be rolled than others. For example, main stats or vitality. Still, even if our assumption is incorrect, the system is still weighted towards desirable stats, so if anything, it should be improving our chances instead of diminishing them. Assumption number three is that two identical affixes are possible. This has been tested and proven many times over, so I won't go into it deeply. Just think of it as, when you re-roll and two of the Mystic's offers are to get a single socket, you've basically tested this assumption yourself. Here comes the fun part. This is where people get one shot by math in the original post, but I'll boil it down to what I think are the two most important questions. First, how many re-rolls and at what cost will it take to get the correct affix? And the second is, how many re-rolls and at what cost will it take to get the correct affix with perfect value? I would say that for 99% of the items only the first question is of any importance. For a rare item with good rolls or a legendary item with mediocre rolls that you're bound to replace within a few days or weeks, you should conserve your money and be satisfied that you got 5 crit chance instead of 6 or 70 all resist instead of 90. The only times when perfection of an affix should be pursued is when the rest of the stats are close to the maximum and the item is best in slot or close to best in slot and you don't expect it to be replaced within at least a couple of months. The formula we're going to use is this. Px is the probability that the affix is chosen after an x number of crafts. Since we really want a certain affix, let's say that we want there to be a 99.5% certainty that we get it. Pc is the probability that the affix is not chosen. In the example, we will use a rare glove piece that has 8 affix options. One of them is desired and the rest are not. And we get two options from the mystic, excluding of course the option to keep the original affix. And that means that PC is. 
As you can see, you can count the number of possible affixes and easily adjust these numbers according to your needs for an item that you want to make a calculation for. The result in this case with 8 affix options would be this. And if we introduce this result to the formula I showed you beforehand, it turns into this. Which, according to a Google calculation, is about 20. And this is the number of rerolls you have to make for a 99.5% certainty that you'll get your desired affix. I'll start rerolling on the screen until I get to 20 rerolls, which is, so to speak, the point of certainty for this formula. Once again, it could be a bit off because of the possibility for a weighted system, but I'll reiterate that such a mechanic will only serve to our benefit, making the desirable stats appear more often and reducing our expenses. In the original post, the scaling of the gold costs was off because it assumed a very uniform increase of the gold needed for enchanting. Also, please note that we're using a rare item as an example, and certain legendaries, in example amulets and rings, require a flawless imperial gem for their rerolls, rapidly ramping up our costs. Because starting from the baseline gem in Reaper of Souls, which is the Marquise, each flawless imperial gem will cost you an additional 900,000 gold on top of the crafting costs and materials. I rolled down the costs of each enchant for the glove and they started out at about 2000 gold increase per enchant for the first 5, jumped to about 9000 gold increase for the next 5 enchants and remained at about 14000 gold increase for the final 10 enchants. The final price for the 20 rerolls was just shy of 1.8 million gold. Not too expensive and not too cheap. Just about doable for anyone that's taking the game seriously. As for the second question, how many rerolls and at what cost will it take to get the correct affix with perfect value, things quickly take an ugly turn for our gold reserves. Even more so if we're aiming for an affix with a wider range of possibilities, for example a main stat. Cobalt Tate's example has a range of 76 values, and using the previous formula, this brings us to a staggering 1610 rerolls needed for a 99.5% certainty that you'll get the desired affix with a maximum value. The total cost of such a venture would be about 6.5 billion gold, so even if you're adventurous, you like to tempt fate and think that you have the money or the luck to get a perfect roll before the thousandth re-roll, I would strongly advise you to do such perfection re-rolls only for items that are truly worth it. And that would be, of course, best in slot legendaries that have the other rolls at the maximum or very near to the maximum and you expect them to last you until maybe the next expansion. In short, I would stick to around 10 re-rolls for good rares and mediocre legendaries. These items will not remain in the gear slot for very long, thus rendering significant expenses for them irrelevant. It might be tempting to go on a reroll binge with a shiny new legendary. I've done some very foolish reroll streaks on weapons that are actually bad in the grand scheme of things and wasted a couple of million that I definitely could have kept, so don't repeat my mistake and if an item is significantly off of the good rolls on two or more of its affixes, resist the urge to go on a reroll spree and give it only a handful of chances if you must. If it doesn't get the proper affix, let it go. The price will ramp up much faster than the item is actually worth to you. I hope you learned something useful today and we can make adjustments to the formula as a community. As always, if you enjoyed what you saw, I would appreciate your subscription to my daily content about Diablo and I'll see you guys next time.